prayed for guidance from the Holy Spirit to show me what I needed to see in the Bible when I was feeling leading to look to the Bible. And I turned to Deuteronomy. Of course, I had no idea where I was turning, but this is where I ended up. And so I prayed on it if he wanted me to share it with anybody else or, you know, if it was something for me, but I'm supposed to share it. And it is very significant considering the times we're living in. They're all shadows of things to come in the Bible. There is nothing new under the sun. In Deuteronomy, they have escaped from being the bonds, the slaves of Egypt, and they are awaiting the promised land. We were slaves to sin. Jesus frees us from our sin, and so we should not be struggling daily with habitual sins. And I know that some people don't like to hear that, but, you know, Jesus freed us from the sins. He gave us the power with the Holy Spirit. It's the same Holy Spirit that was inside of Jesus. And so if you doubt that you can get free from the bondage of sin, then that's just denying that Jesus Christ died to save us from that bondage of sin because he clearly said, you shall be free indeed. And we have been freed from that. Hopefully you have everybody listening out there. And when you've been freed from sin, from being the slaves of sin, we're now slaves to righteousness, and we are awaiting the promised land when we will get out of this world that is the world of Satan and get into the world that is ruled by Jesus and God above him. And so this is very apropos um, to what's going on here, just shadows, Moses trying to teach them getting out of the slavery of Egypt and getting into the promised land. But before that, God gives him the commandments. So I want to read um, this whole thing about where the commandments come in. Deuteronomy 4, verse 44. This is the law Moses set before the Israelites. These are the stipulations, decrees, and laws Moses gave them when they came out of Egypt and were in the valley near Beth Peor, east of the Jordan, in the land of Sihon, king of the Ammonites, who reigned in Heshbon and was defeated by Moses and the Israelites as they came out of Egypt. They took possession of his land and the land of Og, king of Bashan, and two Amorite kings east of the Jordan. This land extended from Aror on the rim of the Arnon gorge to Mount Sion, that is Hermon, and included all the Araba east of the Jordan as far as the Sea of Araba below the slopes of Pishka. Moses summoned all Israel and said, Hear, O Israel, the decrees, the laws, decrees and laws I declare in your hearing today. Learn them and be sure to follow them. Yahweh, our God, made a covenant with us at Horeb. It was not with our fathers that Yahweh made this covenant, but with us, with all of us who are alive here today. Yahweh spoke to you face to face out of the fire of the mountain at the time I stood between Yahweh and you to declare to you the word of Yahweh, because you were afraid of the fire and did not go up the mountain. And he said, I am Yahweh, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, Yahweh your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of Yahweh your God for the... Yeah, sorry, it's probably covering the mic again. You shall not misuse the name of Yahweh your God, for Yahweh will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. This is referring to people who go about sinning. Um, I covered that in Are You Taking the Lord's Name in Vain video. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as Yahweh your God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to Yahweh your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals, nor the alien within your gates, so that your manservant and maidservant may rest as you do. 
Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that Yahweh your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, Yahweh your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother as Yahweh your God has commanded you, so that you may live long and that it may go well with you to, in the land of Yahweh your God. In the land the Yahweh your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not, sorry, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not set your desire on your neighbor's house or land, his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I know that many people are coveting. When you watch TV, I gave it up last year, but when you watch TV, you see commercials and you're always coveting what other people have and what you don't have. Nobody should, nobody should watch TV. That's what their intent is to make you covet things. Um, verse 22, these are the commandments of Yahweh, the commandments Yahweh proclaimed in a loud voice to your whole assembly there on the mountain from out of the fire, the cloud and the deep darkness. And he added nothing more. Then he wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. When you heard the voice out of the darkness, while the mountain was ablaze with fire, all the leading men of your tribes and your elders came to me. And you said, Yahweh, our God has shown us his glory and his majesty. And we have heard his voice from the fire. Today we have seen that a man can live even if God speaks with him. But now why should we die? This great fire will consume us, and we will die if we hear the voice of Yahweh our God any longer. For what mortal man has ever heard the voice of the living God speaking out of fire, as we have and survived? Go near and listen to all that Yahweh our God says. Then tell us whatever Yahweh our God tells you. We will listen and obey. Yahweh heard you when you spoke to me, and Yahweh said to me, I have heard what this people said to you. Everything they said was good. Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commands always, so that it might go well with them and their children forever. Go tell them to return to their tents, but you stay here with me so that I may give you all the commands, decrees, and laws you are to teach them to follow in the land I am giving them to possess. So be careful to do what Yahweh your God has commanded you. Do not turn aside to the right or to the left. Walk in all the way that Yahweh your God has commanded you, so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess. I'm just thinking when you don't walk to the right or to the left, that's kind of like the straight path, the straight gate um, into heaven through Jesus, the gate, our shepherd. His commandments, Jesus' commandments encompassed these commandments. He wasn't rewriting them. Love the Lord your God, love Yahweh your God. These are the commands, decrees, and laws of Yahweh your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear Yahweh your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you, that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as Yahweh, the God of your fathers, promised you. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our God, Yahweh is one. Love Yahweh, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk, sorry, I might have been covering the mic again. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our God, Yahweh is one. Love Yahweh our, your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. That's like the mark in your forehead, the ones that are sealed in Revelation have marks on their forehead. These are the commandments. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. And with blood they put in Passover around their door frames. Again, reminiscent of the commandments around their door frames so that they would be passed over. 
When Yahweh your God brings you into the land he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large, flourishing cities, you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant, then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget Yahweh, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. This may also be um, the, like the promised land for us, like I said. Remember that when we're going into the promised land, we should remember Yahweh our God. And when we love him, we will keep his commandments. Fear Yahweh your God, serve him only, and take your oaths in his name. Do not follow other gods, the gods of the peoples around you. For Yahweh your God, who is among you, is a jealous God, and his anger will burn against you, and he will destroy you from the face of the land. People were warned not to follow another Christ. Another Christ is a Christ who did not teach that we would be following the commandments if we loved Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you don't believe that, then you're following another Christ, another doctrine. All right, verse 16, do not test Yahweh your God as you did at Massah. Be sure to keep the commands of Yahweh your God and the stipulations and decrees he has given you. Do what is right and good in Yahweh's sight, so that it may go well with you, and you may go in and take over the good land that Yahweh promised, an oath to your far forefathers, thrusting out all your enemies before you, as Yahweh said. In the future, when your son asks you what is the meaning of the stipulations, decrees, and laws Yahweh your God has commanded you, tell him, We were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt. But Yahweh brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Before our eyes, Yahweh set miraculous sights and wonders, great and terrible, upon Egypt and Pharaoh and his whole household. But he brought us out from there to bring us and give us the land that he promised an oath to our forefathers. Yahweh commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear Yahweh our God, so that we might always prosper and be alive, as is the case today. And if we were are careful to obey all the law before Yahweh our God, as he has commanded that will be our righteousness. Jesus did not preach anything different. He preached that we were slaves to sin and that he would free us, and we are. He preached that if you loved him, you would keep his commandments, and his commandments came from Yahweh. He said that he spoke everything Yahweh told him to say. They're the same commandments. They were just boiled down to two main ones and then one main one, which is to agape love everybody and lay our lives down and do God's will each day. This is what he has been pressing upon me as I've been doing these videos. And they all tie together. And then he will drive out the nations. I'm not going to get into this part. Um, but when we are free and sent into the promised land, the kingdom... Then, later on, Jesus will come back and drive out all the other nations, and then Yahweh will be worshipped. Jesus quite plainly says that his God will be worshipped in Revelation over and over again. Revelation 3.12, this is Jesus speaking, Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the New Jerusalem which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. If you're wondering if people will be keeping the commandments, it's in Revelation 14, um, let's see, verse 12. This calls for patient endurance on the... Sorry, I was covering the mic again. Revelation 14, 12. This calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints who obey God's commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. So yes, we are to obey God's commandments because we love him. If you love him, you will keep his commandments. All of this feels like it's coming together with everything that he's been showing me over and over and over again. Yahweh our God, Yahweh is one. We are to love him with all of our heart and soul and keep his commandments because we love him and lay down our life 
that agape love. Sacrifice our life and be a sweet savor to him. Do his will each day. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a blessed day.